Hey, Cameron McKenzie here at Cameron MCNZ on Twitter, and I wanted to talk to you about the try catch finally block in UiPath and how I can add this try catch block to a little piece of code that uh, I created in the previous tutorial on getting started with UiPath. In my previous example, I built this number guesser application. It only took about five minutes to build it in that tutorial. So check that out if you want to start this from scratch. But as you can see, basically it asks me to pick a number. And if I get the number right, it says, hey, you've picked the number right. But if I play this and I don't provide any input at all, all of a sudden I get an exception that says, hey, system not supported error. Something really, really went wrong. So one way to avoid that is to put try catch blocks into your applications. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into system. I believe it's under statements and there you can find the try catch block element there. And I'm actually going to put it right to the top because I'm going to surround everything in a try catch block. And so there's my try catch block. So try to do something, catch any exceptions and then finally close everything up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my whole activity and I'm gonna drag that whole activity right into the try block there. And I'm also gonna drag that message in as well. And there we go. I'm gonna take a, a better look at that, maybe go to 100%. But you can see my sequence now has this try catch block that surrounds everything. Everything happens within this try catch block. And if there's an error, I can catch it and I can exit the program eloquently. Now, one thing I should say, user input shouldn't throw an exception. So really, I probably should be doing user input validation. That's a better best practice, but it's a good way to just demonstrate how exceptions work. And so what you do is you do all of your work and then you try and catch an exception. In this case, I've got the system exception that I need to worry about. Notice you can catch multiple ones, just generic exception, system exception, null reference exception. I'm gonna catch the system exception and when you catch it, you gotta do something. And so what am I gonna do? Well, I guess I could always throw up a, a message box and say, hey, you didn't supply a number. I just kind of get mad at the person. And you can have multiple catches. So you can add a new catch block here. Maybe you just wanted to catch the most generic system exception here. And I don't know, what do you want to do here? You can always, you know, one thing people like to do is they like to log. So you can also throw a log message in there and set the log level to warn. And hey, hey, we need input validation. And that's really the solution to this problem. The solution to this problem is not throwing an exception. It's dealing with uh, input validation so exceptions aren't thrown. But again, we're just kind of demonstrating thing here. And then there's your finally block. And the finally block always runs. And so no matter what happens, the, the finally block will run. And I'm going to just say here and just say, And as I said, that will actually run regardless of whether an exception is thrown or not. So that's, that's your idea of the finally block. And so there you go. Now we've got a nice tight application where we put everything in a try catch block. Hopefully the number, the application runs as expected. But if there is an exception, we will get an error message and a, a message box there. And so let me try and run this application. Now, as I said, when I just type numbers in normally, everything seems to look good. But if I don't type anything in, notice it now says, hey, you didn't supply a number. That is the result of the catch block being triggered. Hey, you didn't supply a number. And then when we're done on here, it's going to go down to this finally block. And it now it says, we enjoyed having you around. And now one thing you'll notice that even if there isn't an exception, so if I play this and I type in the number five, that means that I'll win. So you pick the right number and the finally block runs again, no matter what. So that finally block always runs whether there's a, a exception or not. One of the things you often do in that is close resources. You got a database connection or a connection to a file and you wanna make sure that that connection is closed regardless of whether there's an exception or not. Usually you code that inside of the finally. You don't really make the finally part of your application flow control, but we did there and it worked. And there you go, that's how the try catch finally block works in UiPath. If you enjoyed this tutorial, head over to the serverside.com. We've got lots of great tutorials and articles on enterprise software development. You can always follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and subscribe.
on YouTube.